Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing good. So in this video, we will try to cover up DP and then start different uh, topic like maybe backtracking and then we'll finish backtracking fast and go to graph. So let us look at today's problem straight away. Today's problem is Boolean parenthesization. And see, this problem is actually quite hard. It took me also some time to understand, code it, and then try to come up with a reasonably understandable explanation. And I hope this video will help you. Uh, see, I advise you that before trying to solve this problem, uh, first try and solve the problem a matrix chain multiplication. So I have already made a video. Previous part was that only matrix chain multiplication. Please solve this. The theory and all I've explained in the other video. Okay. It has got appreciation. A lot of you have liked it and uh, please share it with your friends also. Okay. So first watch this. And the reason why I'm saying this is because this problem is uh, heavily uh, similar. I would say actually it's quite similar to matrix chain multiplication. Okay. Uh, see, we'll just take a quick recap of what was that matrix chain multiplication. Okay. So in matrix chain multiplication, a very quick recap, maybe one, two minutes only max. See MCM, we had some uh, matrices, say A1, A2, A3, so on, like this AN. Okay. And we had to find out the minimum cost of multiplication, which means we had to say like, for example, if there are three matrices A, B, C, we can multiply like A into B, C, or we can do A, B into C, right? So we had to decide where do we make partition? Like where do we put the bracket? Do we do it like this? Or uh, do we do it something like this? You know, where do we actually put that? Okay, so there was a recursive solution to this. There was a recursive solution. If you have not watched, please watch that video. There was a recursive solution to this and then we had memoized it. So memoization we had done. Okay. The same thing is going to apply for this problem that Boolean parenthesization. It is going to apply to this same, uh, same concept. Okay. So what is the main thing I wanted to tell is we had to decide where to make partition and put the bracket, Bra put the bracket. Why am I saying put the bracket? Because this term put the bracket will help us in this problem. We'll read the problem statement, but first we'll just take a recap. Okay. So put the bracket means we are going to solve this part first and then this part and whatever answer is there cumulatively we'll find out which is going to give us the best possible answer. Something like that was the problem. So I suggest you please watch that video. Now let us come to today's problem. So let us see today's problem. Given a Boolean expression S of length N with the following symbols, T F, T is true, F is false and operators and or XOR, Boolean and Boolean or Boolean XOR. Okay, count the number of ways we can parenthesize the expression. We can parenthesize. What is parenthesize meaning? Put the brackets. There is a way of putting the brackets, right? So how many different ways are there? So that the final expression is always true. Final expression always, always evaluates to true. It means, see, suppose there is true or false and true. Okay. Now, how many different ways are there to put bracket? Either I will do this, which means that, see, this is anyway true, but what is false and true? So for that, we need to know truth table. Okay. So let us write down the truth table quickly so that this will be our reference. So what is truth table, truth table for and true and true is true, true and false false, false and true, false, false and false, false. Okay. Or you can skip this part. If you already know it, true or true, true, true or false, true, false or true, true, false or false is false. 
and XOR is going to be true XOR false, false XOR true. Both of them will give us true, whereas true XOR true or false XOR false is going to give us false. So this basic truth table we will have for all our calculations. Okay, so false and true is false. And here or is there. So true or false, true. So this expression evaluates to true. However, I can also parenthesize this like uh, in this manner, this expression in this manner, like true or false, that result I will end with this true. So what is true or false here? True or false, where is truth table? Okay, true or false, true. True and true is true, fine. So like this, how many different methods are there? So we'll be given an expression like this. It will be a string, okay? And the string will be in this format only. They will be either a character T or false, and it will be followed by an operator. It will be followed by an operator. It will never be of this form, true, true, false, and no, it won't be true, 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 false. Two consecutive things will never be operator or uh, uh, character. It is always like true and uh, uh, true or false and something true XOR like that. So uh, it is always going to be in this format. Okay. I think I need to erase this. Okay, so I hope we have understood at least what is the question. How many different ways are there to parenthesize so that final expression evaluates to true? That is important. And also in this problem here, they're asking us to output the answer modulo 1003. So we have to remember this also, we have to take modulo 1003. Okay. Uh, what will be our... the approach to solving this, how can we relate to our matrix chain multiplication? So what are the similarities in MCM and this problem? So in MCM also see we have, we have been given some matrices, correct? And here there is an expression like true, false and true, XOR, false like this. So in MCM, we used to put a bracket somewhere like this. Okay, we used to start putting brackets in this manner. Here, how do we put the bracket? Where do we put? What does it mean putting the bracket? Basically, we have to do a partition, right? We have to do the partition of entire string. So we'll evaluate left side, we'll evaluate right side and the uh, resultant expressions which are evaluated on either side, we'll evaluate that again. It means that Consider the basic expression like this. Suppose our string is like this. Our string S is given to us like this. See, can we do a, is it logical to do a partition on this character? See, this is character T. It is true. Is there, does it make sense to do any partition on this? What does it mean doing partition? That means on the left side, there is nothing. And on the right side, there is something like this. So it doesn't make a sense to do partition on our characters, which are true, false, but we should do partition on operators because then only it makes sense. If I do a partition here, it means that I'm evaluating the left side and the right side and whatever expression I'm getting from left and right, I'm finally doing and operation of that. So in this example, left expression evaluates to true only because there is no other expression right side it evaluates to false there is no other expression so it will return to this fu function call again so true here false here true and false false so final expression can only be evaluated to false so in this case number of ways of making partition will be zero only like that here partition means that only wherever there is a operator we have to make partition over there and we have to evaluate the left side. We have to evaluate the left side as well as the right side. And whatever answers we get, that has to be evaluated again. 
So evaluate the uh, resultant answers also. So this is same as matrix chain multiplication. See, I'll show the code of matrix chain multiplication and I'll try to tell you where it is same. See here, when we are doing the inner loop, right? When we are taking the inner loop, that is that K loop where we are finding uh, the place to do partition as discussed in the previous video. See here, we are doing one partition like this, that is from I to K. This is corresponding to left side partition. Then we are doing another partition from K plus one to J. This is corresponding to right side partition. And then whatever answer we are getting, we are adding. And also here there is another part. So this was specific to that problem MCM, where we had to calculate the uh, number of multiplications, right? So that was specific there. So in Boolean parenthesization also, similar concept only will be there. This problem is also about finding that partition only. But here, this uh, in Boolean parenthesization, all these things are not required. So we have to make some modifications in this MCM code only. That is what I want to basically come to that point only that only these uh, modifications are there. The structure is going to be the same because recursive memoization everywhere. It's almost the same only, right? See here we are doing memoization. We're taking DP matrix. We are checking if it is not already found out, if the value is not found out. Here in our uh, current question, uh, here what will be our memoization? How will we do memoization for our recursive call? So first let us understand the recursive calls. How will the recursive calls happen? So for that, let us... Uh, so I guess I have to erase it. So let us understand how the recursion recursion takes place in this problem. Suppose my string is say true or false and actually wait, uh, what is it? True or true, fine. True or true and false XOR true. Suppose this is my expression, fine. Wherever the operators are there, only there I can do a partition. Then only it makes sense, fine. So suppose, okay, I consider my first partition I will do here. That means left side is this expression. This is my operator and my right partition is this. Okay, so now left side, if you have to evaluate, we observe that there is no operator here. It is only one character, true. So this finally evaluates to true only and this will be passed back to the original function call. So this is one function call, this entire thing. So right side was another, sorry, left side was another function call. And from that function call, finally we return true only. Now come to uh, right side function call. See now right side, there are two operators. So firstly, what I will do, I can do this. I will make a partition about the and operator. Or I can do something like this. I can make a partition about the XOR operator. So if I make it uh, on the XOR operator, the partition right side will be that only true expression that this one. Okay. And left side will be this expression. However, if I do partition on and it is going to be like this. Now see again here, true evaluates to true only. And what is this? How is this going to break now? Over here, only one operator is there. So it is going to break like this false and true and this will evaluate to false this will evaluate to true these two values will be passed back to this function call and then we will get false xor true as a true this true will be passed on to this function call this one and true will be passed on from here true xor true sorry true and true will be true Okay, so from this function call, finally, we will return true only. Whereas let us check here. Here it will be what true, make a partition, false. This will return true, this will return false. This is going to return true only. So like this, we'll get a recursive tree. See over here, I have done only partition. This is one case. Okay, this is one case where I have done partition about this or operator. 
However, I could have done a partition like this also about this AND operator. So left side expression is this, what is in the bracket and right side expression becomes this, fine. If you observe carefully when we are doing recursive call here, see true, we had here also true, fine. Which means that overlapping problems will be there. If you try to find out, make the big recursion tree, you will find a lot of overlapping sub problems. That is why you can use memoization. So in a matrix chain multiplication, if for memoization, what was the number of states? Number of states, how do we decide? We decide based upon how many variables are going to be changing. So what is it that we are passing to our MCM function, the DP matrix, as well as I and J over here, I and J represent the in the index values. Where do we want to make the partition? Similarly, in this problem also, we have to pass I and J. Okay. But here one more variable we need, suppose it is known as is true. Why do we need this Boolean variable is true? Because we have to tell if the expression is true or false, right? See in matrix chain multiplication, I will always keep taking reference to this code because then only you will be able to remember for long. If you try to solve this problem as a completely new problem, it will be very difficult. So in matrix chain multiplication here, if we observe, we are making these calculations, right? But in our current problem, Boolean parenthesization, such things are not needed. But what do we need? We need to know whether the expression is evaluating to true or false. That is why we'll keep a Boolean variable is true. And depending upon whether it is true or false, we'll try to find out the answers accordingly. So if we observe actually here, three variables are changing. So we need to have a 3DP matrix, three dimension. But if you observe the dimension of this is true, is I is going to be two only, right? Dimension is going to be true only, or two only, because either it can be false, or it can be true. So essentially, if I have to erase all this, I'll erase it with. So essentially, basically our DP matrix now will be a three dimension matrix, but this third dimension it will have only two states. It will have only two states. So essentially, it will have O of n square uh, space complexity only because this third dimension has only two states. Instead of using DP matrix, you can use unordered map also. Unordered map you can use. How is it going to be? It is like string and uh, maybe int or bool, whatever. Like this, you can use unordered map also. What is this string going to be? See, basically here, how many variables are changing? I, J, and is true is changing, correct? So I and J is for what the index values, where we are going to make the partition at which index, okay? And is true will be whether we are re returning true for that expression or false for that expression, the current expression. So you can make a string like this only, I plus J, plus is true and this is in the form of a string so all these are going to be strings like this and you can make this as a string and you can uh, store it in the map like that also you can do but uh, i will be explaining with this uh, dp matrix because it will be simpler so it is going to be basically dp i j is true this is true can be either true or false Okay, that is important to remember. It can either be true or false. And one more thing, see, we should not get confused by uh, the question. It says that final expression, it should be true. Correct. Final expression should be true. But tell me one thing. Suppose there is a left side expression. So left expression, I'll say. And there is a right side expression. Okay. There is some operator over here. Fine. So this left and right side expression, always it need not be, be true. Both of them need not be true. Which means that, see, this can be false and this can be false. And uh, 
or this can be false and this can be true. And suppose the operator is like this. Suppose uh, this is true and this is false and operator is or. Then see, we will still get the final expression as true only in both the cases. So what I'm trying to say is, although the question says final expression should be true, our uh, sub problems, uh, the sub problems in which we'll have two different expressions, right? Left side and right side for each operator. That can either be true or false. So we have to take into account of all the case, uh, cases when it is true as well as it is false. Because we're observing here only, see true or false or false exhort true, finally it evaluates true only. So in our DP matrix, right? In our DP matrix, whatever will be the final answer, that final answer we have to take true only not false, but we will store both true and false values because even false values can help us get true value at the end. We have to consider all those cases also because those many number of ways also count. Always we can't look for only true expression. So this existing MCM code, we just have to make a few changes here and there. Okay, so what changes basically can we be making? See here, I'm taking a DP matrix and uh, uh, I'm passing the index values zero and N minus one. Okay, so just make a note that here we can take zero N minus one in MCM problem. We are taking index from one. Here we can take zero n minus one. I'll leave it to you as to uh, for you to think about it. Why we are taking zero to length minus one? And don't uh, just see this time that one minute I've taken because I actually uh, like uh, registered again. Like my account had been uh, this thing uh, synced out, signed off, and. Uh, I signed in and then I submitted again. That is why one minute it's showing. It took me longer time only. So don't get uh, this thing panic that you solved in one minute. No, no, I, I took longer time. Okay. okay. Then everything remains the same. Here, see, if I is greater than J, that is, if our starting index is greater than ending, it doesn't make sense. So we return zero. And if I is equal to J, that means we have only one character. We have only one, we are at only one character. Okay. And I and J will always be at character only. I and J will never be at operator. For operator, we have separate loop. I and J will always be at characters, which are true or false. So if the, if we are checking for true expression, Okay, if we want to find out the true expression only, then we'll check if our current character is true. If we want to find out false expression, then we'll check if our current character is F false, F for false. And just remember again and again, why we are checking for false and true, just remember this case, wherein our sub problem expression can be false but ultimately it might help us evaluate to a true expression. That is why we need to find out how many false expressions are also there. Then we are using memoization wherein we're checking in the table, whether that current state has already been evaluated. If it has been evaluated, we'll return modulo 10,003. Uh, so modulo is important. Don't forget to take modulo here. Then see the same MCM code here also see the K loop started, right? This K loop is for, uh, where do we take the partition? Where do we make the partition, right? Same thing here also. And what are these variables? Basically left side, right side, that is left true, right true, uh, left false, right false. So you either get four things. Correct. You will either get only four kinds of things. Either left side is true, 
राइट साइड इज ट्रू और लेफ्ट साइड इज ट्रू राइट साइड इज फॉल्स और राइट साइड इज लेफ्ट साइड इज फॉल्स राइट साइड इज ट्रू लेफ्ट साइड इज फॉल्स राइट साइड ऑल्सो इज फॉल्स सो only these kind of things we have to take care right so that is what i have mentioned over here and we'll be checking if our current state has not been evaluated if it has been evaluated then we'll assign it to that variable so just check here how the loop is starting it is starting from i plus 1 why i plus 1 because we know that i is always going to be a character which is true or false and i plus 1 will always be an operator that is how our input will be given so we are always going to do partition about the operator and we are taking jump step of 2 because every operator only we want to do partition and it is running it is running until where j minus 1 that is last uh, character before that whatever is there fine then we will evaluate all these expressions so we'll make a left side partition i to k minus 1 so in left side partition we want to find out if the final expression is true as well as if it is false same thing for right side whether final expression for the right side is it true final expression for the right side only i'm talking now right side only of our partition okay and then we will compare what is our operator see we will compare is it and operator or xor operator or an or operator accordingly we will make calculation see if it is a and operator then we'll check if we want to evaluate for true expression that is is true is it true or false if it is true that means see left side whatever is true and right side whatever is true how many ways are there to get left side true right side true we'll multiply because see if on uh, if there is an expression like this and suppose there are three ways of getting true and two ways of getting true on the right side three on the left side what are what are these two these two are number of ways of getting those expressions as true and here in between these two expression there is and operator so total number of ways of getting true for this entire expression will be 3 into 2 so like that see then you have to refer to this truth table that is why this truth table i had made long ago okay refer to this truth table and then check if the expression you are evaluating is it true or is it false if it is false then you have to make all those uh, you have to calculate all those cases where the final expression is going to be false so how is final expression being false left side it is true but right side it is false or left side it is false right side it is true or both side it is false like that so we have to take so i gave example for one operator and same things we have to do for all the other operators by referring to this truth table and finally we will make this dp of ij is result dp of ij is true this see don't get confused by the name is true this is true name is a boolean variable it can store true as well as false and we have to store true and false also we want to know how many ways are there to get false expression also don't forget this point many of you will get confused and question me see the sub problems can evaluate to false but that false uh, a number of ways of evaluating to false can help us get total expression as true if you observe here false xor true is ultimately true only that is why number of ways of getting false is also important and finally return this so this is a simple memoization so i did not put too much stress in uh, making the diagram here because in matrix chain multiplication i had done it here also it will be the same thing and actually the calculations will become easy if you want to dry run the code because in matrix chain multiplication you have to literally perform the multiplication here it is just uh, true uh, and false because boolean algebra right so i guess you can do this okay 
so that's all for this video i know it was quite a lengthy video but i hope you got some benefit out of it and if you did please hit the like button it will really really help me it will help the algorithm and subscribe to the channel it will really motivate me and please share this video with all your friends as much as possible so until the next videos take care stay safe keep learning keep growing stay tuned bye